Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today we're going to have a lesson on getting your materials into the Source Game Engine and we're focusing on exporting world materials, materials that you put on brushes inside of Hammer. In previous videos I've shown you how to export your materials for your models, but I haven't touched on exporting world materials yet for your brushes. And this one will explain to you how to do that. This is going to be a series of a few different videos. In this first one we're just going to export a simple material. We're going to create it from scratch too. You'll need to open up the material editor which is this button here. You can also press M on the keyboard. What we'll want to do is create a, a standard material. And you can right click like I just did and choose this menu in slate or if you're using the old material editor you just make a material like you normally would. Once we have our material, you'll want to make a diffuse texture. So you can drag out from your diffuse and select one. The first one we're going to choose here is tile. We're going to make like a brick type texture. And we'll zoom in on here. And we need to apply this material to our object in the scene. You can take this output node on your material and drag it out to your material. You can also, when you have the material selected and when you have a scene object selected, you can select your material and click this option, Assign Material to Selection, and it will put that material onto your object. Now you'll notice that the material is not appearing on my texture, and if you want your material to appear, which we do here, we need to make sure our material is selected, and we need to go up to this icon in the top of the editor and it says show shaded material in viewport. We'll click that and now we can see our material in the viewport. Now for this demonstration I'm using a plane object. This is just one plane and its UVW mapping is planar and one tile takes up the entire space. If that does not make sense to you you're fine if you just make a plane and use it but you probably should learn a little bit about that. Also in my map here, the tile map, I have set that it has tile on and it has tiling of one and one. I'm actually going to uncheck tile and if you understand more about the UVWs and how it exports and stuff, you can uh, use whatever settings you want here. But I'm unchecking those for now just so I can make sure that it's what I see is what I'm getting. And later, and as you learn more, you can uh, experiment with different tiling and uh, get some really cool different things but for now we're just using no tiling really one uh, iteration of this map fills up this and there's no tiling so I can see here that a hundred percent of my bitmap it, it is going to fill up the whole space without any tiling now this texture has various uh, presets for the type of tile and um, you can pick the one that suits best your material here. I'm going to use this one right here and I'm going to change some of the colors. I want the inner color to be that and we're just going to leave it at that for this demonstration at the moment. As you get more experience with this, you can make cooler textures by adding multiple nested trees of, of maps. For example, we could add various noise and other maps that input into the tiles and grout textures. But for now, just to show you how to get your base material into Max, we're just going to keep this simple material and we're going to export it. Now, The first thing we need to do at this point is create a TGA bitmap. All exporting of, of your materials, whether it's for models or for world textures, have to be in the format of TGA bitmaps. There's no exception. So if you make a material like this and apply it either to a model or this setup and then try to export, you're not going to get any materials. I've gotten a lot of emails over the last year of people not understanding this. They make a material, apply it to their models, and in Hammer or in the Model Viewer they always see purple and black textures. The reason is they have not assigned bitmaps to their materials. That's very important. So I'm going to create a new material. 
to hold our other material. Any map, most maps at least, which this tiles map here accounts for a map. Not material, the materials are different. A map is one of these levels of a material. It's a map of the material. So if you right click the map, you're not going to see what I'm about to show you. If you right click a map, you don't see it. So if you get confused, remember it's on the map level, not the material. You need to right click the map. When you do that, you'll see this option here that says render map. If you click that, you'll get a dialog. And the dialog lets you save a bitmap of that level of the map. We're going to save this. We're going to render this out as a TGA bitmap. Now, the dimensions are important. They have to be numbers like 128 times 128, 512 times 512, 1024 times 1024, things like that. If you use the default, which for some reason is 240 by 240, it will not work. Remember that. It will not work if you just use the standard, the default dimensions. You have to give it another dimension. So I'm going to give this one a dimension of 512 by 512. And then I'm going to hit the files. And I'm going to choose a, a location to render this out to. Generally speaking, I like to keep my things in the scene assets and then images. And I'm going to call this brick zero one dot TGA. You could also select TGA from this list and it will choose that for you. When you do this and hit save it's going to give you this export dialog. If your material does not have any alpha you should not choose these alpha split and pre-multiplied alpha. If your material is going to use them go ahead and choose those. It's important because the exporter does honor alpha and you need to learn more about that in the documentation. Once you hit OK, you can hit Render. And now we have this bitmap saved. Now we need to assign that material, that bitmap, to the diffuse slot of this new material that we made. And here's our material, Brick01. I'm going to tell it to use this one in the viewport and I can actually just assign that and it's going to look about the same now. Now the exporter only works on materials that are assigned to objects in your scene and the exporter will use these types of materials. Standard, which is the one we've just used. Multi sub-object and shell. Now the shell material actually is convenient and I'm going to go ahead and create a shell, a shell material. And I'm going to assign I'm going to assign the original material to the original here and the baked one to this and assign this to our material. And what this does is it allows me to change the original and then render it out parametrically into that bitmap and not have to worry about it. So there's a fundamental difference in the way materials export between the Walwer model tools and which are for models and the world texture exporter which is in the displacement tool. The primary difference is that you need to go into the material where your bitmap is located and wherever the name of the material is you need to define the path of where this material is going to be in game in Hammer. Now in my examples what I can do is go look at my uh, path to where source is and here is my material path. Up to this point it's the materials that everyone has in their, in their mod folder. At that point if I want to put this texture inside of a folder called walls that is inside of another called another folder called Wallworm which is inside of the materials in this format here then I need to basically put in the word Wallworm slash walls again the name of your material which is the standard material that holds 
the bitmap, the TGA, in the diffuse slot for this, the name of that material has to be the path. And again, this is not to be confused with the Walworth model tools, which handles the paths differently. In world textures, you put the path here. And then the name of your bitmap in the diffuse slot will become the name of the actual textures. In this case, it will be brick 01. So brick 01 will appear inside of the folder wallworm slash walls when we run the export. At this point, you'll need to open up the wallworm displacement tool. And then you'll need to click the button for exporting the materials. If you click that, you'll see this dialog. And it will list all of the materials in your scene that are valid, that are placed on objects in the scene. Note. This also will collect materials that are in any models that are in the scene, so you need to be judicious and pick the ones that you are wanting to export. And we'll check the textures that we want to export, and then we just hit Export Selected. Now remember, Steam has to be running for this, so make sure Steam is running. When we do this, it will give you notice saying that the materials were exported, and it will give you a dialog telling you that the material was exported or not. It exported the materials wallworm walls and then made brick01.tga or VMT and VTF. So let's find out if that's correct. I'm going to open up Hammer here and I'm going to apply that material to these two walls. Let's go browse for it. The path should be wallworm slash walls and there's our brick 01 that we had just made. And I'm going to apply that texture to these walls. Now, of course, it's very huge because of the dimensions that I made in my material and the size of this world scale. That's perfectly fine. You just have to understand those. So if I decided that that material needed to have smaller textures, I would go back into 3DS, go back to my material editor, and change the parameters of this map. Basically uh, changing the horizontal count, increasing that to change it so that there are more of these uh, bricks appearing in there. And that's really just uh, all you got to do. Just keep on tweaking it until you get the texture you want. But it's pretty simple. And I'll go into more videos later explaining how to get bump map materials into source uh, in, with the World Material Exporter. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net. And you can get any of my source tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.